Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you a hashtag inspired card. Let's get started. To kick things off, here are some of the products that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be pulling out the largest of the outside in stitched rectangle die by Lawn Fawn, and we are going to be cutting out a piece of creepy confections paper by My Favorite Things. I will also be using the full moon die that you see over there to the left, as well as the Booyah set. So off camera, I've gone ahead and cut everything out, and now I'm going to come in with that full moon stitched die set, because that kind of gives me a stitched around the outside on the paper that I'm going to keep while it cuts out the moon on the inside, and I'll just save that piece of paper for later. Now, you could use the outside in stitched rectangle, or sorry, not rectangle, circle die, but... My craft room is an absolute mess right now with all the Christmas crafting that I've been doing that I couldn't, simply just couldn't find it. I didn't know where I put it and I was running out of steam and I wanted to get this card done. So this is what we're using to create the window because we're going to do a shaker today. So to get things a little bit spooky and creepy or as creepy as this cute card's ever going to get, I'm going to use some Distress Oxide ink and Twisted Citron rusted wilderness, and then I'll come back in with a little bit of black soot around the edges. Now, I probably should take the time now to tell you why this card is inspired by a hashtag. So, Get Creeping on Halloween is a new hashtag-driven series of Halloween projects started by Jamie over at the Inky and Scrappy's YouTube channel. These projects are posted on the last day of the month, and all are welcome to join in even if you don't have a YouTube channel. Just post your make on social media and use the hashtag GetCreepinOnHalloween. Easy as that. This is just a fun way to get your Halloween going in the middle of the year. It's, it's kind of like that whole getting your jump start on Christmas cards, but because, you know, Jamie and I are kind of all love of things spooky, she thought this would be a fun way to kind of keep the creepiness in our hearts fire aglow. So, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm playing along. Now, she's got a video, her first video of the series on her channel that she posted at the end of November. I'll be sure to leave a link on my description to let you know where to go to watch her first video and I'm pretty sure she'll be making one today as well if you'd like to check that out so here we're going in with some fine tech iridescent watercolor and I'm going to be using that deep black color just to put some flicks on it and this will all soften up a little bit you'll see as it as it all dries that it won't be as dark but you'll still get the idea now I'm just using my lovely little tiny stamping block here, as you can see, and I've gone and flipped everything. So now we're going to do in some Copic coloring. I've already gone ahead and stamped and cut out all of my images off camera, as you saw before. And I thought using the Booyah set would be a lot of fun. Now, I had racked my brain for what to use, and I, have, I thought about maybe doing a horror movie-inspired um card but the one that came to mind was with the beavers and i like a lot of b movies and really cheesy horror and awful acting and just senseless violence and some people just don't appreciate those kinds of videos so I might have to find another idea. So this was fairly simple to put together and it got the ball rolling for for me for the Get Creepin' on Halloween hashtag series. Now I really do hope you join in or are inspired to do something and, and if so, you know, make sure to use the hashtag and even tag Jamie in it because She's got a lot of really cool makes, and I'm kind of curious to see what she comes up with, you know, for all things spooky. So with these Copic markers here, I'm just going in from darkest to lightest. I had everything up there that I'm using, and, you know, so you can get an idea of, you know, what, 
what you need to use if you would like to recreate this. And if you happen to recreate any of these makes, or if you find that I've inspired you to, you know, make something, I'm over on Instagram quite a bit. Now, I do have a Facebook group, or a Facebook page that I do post my makes on, but I'm not as active on there, to be honest. I do post quite a bit on Instagram, so if you don't have Instagram but you have Facebook, you know, send me a message if, if you would like to share what you made with me, you know. It would be kind of cool to see what you come up with, or if you do happen to have Instagram, feel free to tag me at Kate Crafts. You know, I, I love to see everybody else's creativity because, you know, it, it makes me happy. This is my happy place when I'm sitting at my desk creating. And if it's your happy place too, well, I like sharing happiness with others. So feel free to tag me in, in what you make or if it, you think it's something that's pretty cool or if you have an idea that you haven't quite figured out yet and you need somebody to bounce ideas off of, like, hey, I'll be that person because I'm kind of a little bit of a nerd about all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm just going in with a jelly roll pen here in white and kind of touching things up. And then I think well, I'll add some dashes and dots and then I go over to the bigger one and I find that I need to switch that up because that is a 0.5 and those are for more smaller spaces. So I'm going in with a 0.8 and just going over those lines that I made and darkening them up a bit and adding more dots and dashes because even though this card isn't totally creepy, it's more cute and it, it, I needed to get the ball rolling. I wanted to participate in the first one, but time got away from me with all my markets and stuff, so I thought better late than never. I'll join in with the second one. So for the little Booyah ghosts, there really isn't much coloring that needs to be done. I, uh, I just decided to grab an N0 marker just to kind of give them a little bit of a shading to the bottoms of their little ghosty tails. Now you can't really see it here. In person you see it a little bit better, but it's all that little fine detail, I guess that matters, right? So once I'm done with these guys here, I'm gonna go in with a um, black glazed Sakura pen. And I find that if you use one of these and go over the eyes, it gives it a little bit of a gloss and makes it stand out just the slightest little bit. And because I was enjoying using it so much, I decided that I would go over the little ghosty's eye patch with it. Now, sometimes this clogs up and I can't ever get it to flow properly, and I end up scribbling all over a scrap just to get it going. But in the end, it looks really good. Now, I've already taken my panel that I've ink blended on, and I've added some strong double-sided adhesive tape. I'm going to go in with my tape runner and get those corners there. And I'm just going to mash down my piece of acetate. So that'll be my window. And then off camera, I struggled on the struggle bus with this. But I ended up taking some black double-sided foam tape to create my well. And here's where I come back in with that uh, inside, outside in stitched rectangle die. So I can make my little background frame there because I didn't want to just put it on top of the card base. I wanted the, the lettering to be continuous because this isn't a, a pattern paper that I would generally gravitate towards. So I thought I would use it up from the paper pack. Now, I didn't want to have that overage because I never line these things up properly in the back. So I'm just cutting off using the uh, stitched line as my guide to take it down a notch and then that way I can peel off all the paper and put everything together and I won't have to worry about overage. Now here I have got some high supply. Uh, this is iced confetti which reminds me of the 90s and I'll also have uh, mixed black stars, silver sparkles and then later I'll go in with some crystalline purple and crystalline amber green. These are sequin confetti mixes that I won from a high supply giveaway not that long ago and I tell you I I have fun playing with these. I never had a whole lot of sequin mixes or rhinestones or gems or whatever you want to call them confetti pieces clay pieces 
And now I'm set for life, and I don't know how I lived without them, because these are just so much fun, especially for shaker cards. And I really like this collar combination together. I mean, those look kind of pink now, but because they're iridescent, when you shake them in the light, it, it, it takes on whatever color it kind of has around it, and it reflects more. And I just, I love them. They remind me of the 90s. So I'm taking off the release tape to my double-sided foam tape here, and I see that I've got a little bit stuck there. So I end up trying to take it off, but it's, it's really stuck on there, and I'm not going to have any luck. And, you know, if I keep fiddling with that, then I might end up dumping all that. So I'm just going to leave it there. Nobody will know, except you know, if you're watching it. So I'll shake that around a bit, and then I'll end up putting that on a black card base. Now, all I have left to do here is glue on my little ghosties, and I think, well, wait a minute, maybe I'll put them down there. And I think, no, you know what? I'm gonna need, need that room for a little bit of a sentiment. So I'll just glue these guys down, you know, in a trio, touch that up a little bit with my white jelly roll pen. And uh, because it's acetate that I'm gluing on, I'm going to use this Lawn Fawn glue. I find it sticks a little bit better than the Tombow Mono glue. I don't know if it's what it is about the white, I think it's PVA glue, that just sometimes sticks a little bit better than the clear liquid glue. So here's where my sentiment comes in. I've got this, uh, I think it's the Fall Sim Simply Sentiments. I don't know, I'll have to look that up again. Because that one's, I think I missed that one in my list when I was writing all this stuff out. But uh, I'm gone ahead and stamped that off camera and cut that down to where I need it to be. And now I'm just taking a, look, I think it was a C5 marker and going around the edges. And now to blend all of that out to give it a little more of a weathered look, I'm going in with the C1 and blending all that out. So once I am all done with that, I will be able to glue this just straight, no foam or anything like that. I figured because I've got the foam tape propping up my little well there for my shaker card, I really don't need it. So I'm going to go in again with that um, Lawn Fawn glue that I have, and I'm just going to glue that straight. I'll grab my reverse tweezers and line everything up the best that I can. And once I'm done that, I can add some of my little crystals. Here's my completed project. I really do hope that you play along on the Get Creepin' on Halloween series with your own project. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care.